para celebrar el Día Internacional de Monumentos y Sitios, presentamos este cortometraje. Nuestra intención es la de difundir la importancia de cada uno de los ocho puentes transbordadores que sobreviven en el mundo y que son representativos de la Revolución Industrial. Lo que verán es una síntesis que, esperamos, los entusiasme a conocer más sobre cada uno de ellos. Esta presentación tiene mucho de especial, ya que ha sido realizada colaborativamente en tiempos de aislamiento social. No es casual. Todos estos puentes transbordadores han sido testigos y protagonistas de los avatares de la historia, de los buenos y de los malos tiempos. Y representan para su comunidad un símbolo de resistencia que forma parte de su identidad. Cada puente transbordador tiene sus defensores. A ellos que trabajan por su necesaria preservación y para que se reconozca la memoria social que significan, dedicamos este trabajo. That's how we greet each other in Northern Germany. So, moin moin and welcome to Germany's oldest transporter bridge, the Schwebefähre, here in the little village of Osten. Worldwide, there are only eight transporter bridges of its kind left. That's only one of the many reasons why it's definitely worth a visit. This masterpiece of early 19th century architecture was built in 1909 in order to cross the river Oste, regardless of weather and tide. The Eiffel Tower of the North, that's what we locals call the Schwebefähre, spans the Oste with a length of 80 meters. Back in the day, many sailing ships sailed along the river. They had tall masts, which is why the Schwebefähre was built with a height of 38 meters. Only 252 tons of steel were used. Then, as now, the gondola is powered by electricity. The motor is situated at the top of the cage and its wheels, each of them measuring 3.7 meters, run on four rails. When traffic started to increase in the 60s and 70s, the Schwebefähre soon became a bottleneck and was used day and night until a new bridge was constructed in 1974. One year later, in 1975, the transporter bridge was declared a technical monument Since its restoration in 1976, it has been used for touristic purposes. Since then, the Schwebefähre has become the landmark of the whole region and of the Deutsche Fährstraße, a network of historic ferries. For more information about these transporter bridges, you can take a walk on the Hamoa side of the river and visit our ferry information center. There is even a new book about the transporter bridges history that we can recommend to you. Attention, it is in German. And if you want to keep the Schwebefähre and its fascinating history alive, why not make a small donation? We hope you enjoyed your crossing. We wish you an enjoyable stay in our little village of Osten and hope to see you again one day. Goodbye, or as we say here in Northern Germany, tschüss. Eisenbahnhochbrücke. Zu Hause der Rendsburger Schwebefähre. Seit dem Jahre 1913 überspannt sie den Nordostseekanal bei Kilometer 63 und verbindet so die Stadt Rendsburg im Norden mit den Ortschaften der südlichen Kanalseite. Erbaut wurde die Rendsburger Schwebefähre zusammen mit der Eisenbahnhochbrücke von Friedrich Voss. Voss studierte an der Technischen Universität zu Braunschweig 
Er wurde 1908 zum Leiter des Kaiserlichen Kanalbauamtes ernannt und war somit für den Bau der Hochbrücke und der Schwebefähre verantwortlich. Doch die Schwebefähre in Rendsburg ist nicht die einzige Möglichkeit, über den Kanal zu kommen. Unter anderem gibt es noch eine Autobahnbrücke im Osten, die Fährstelle Nobiskrug mit ihren zwei Fähren, welche Tag und Nacht im Einsatz sind, den Kanaltunnel in Rendsburg im Laufe der Bundesstraße 77 oder auch die Fähre in Breiholz, welche sich 12 Kilometer westlich der Schwebefähre befindet. Wie man sehen kann, befindet sich zurzeit keine Schwebefähre unter der Brücke. Am Morgen des 8. Januar 2016 stieß die Fähre durch Unachtsamkeit des Fährführers mit dem Frachter Evert Pram zusammen und wurde so zerstört. Zwei Menschen wurden damals verletzt. Seitdem herrscht Leere unterhalb der Brücke. Ein Nachbau ist bereits beauftragt und die Schienen für den Wagen sind auch bereits installiert. Die Fertigstellung der neuen Schwebefähre ist für die zweite Jahreshälfte 2021 geplant. Die Rendsburger Schwebefähre hat eine große Bedeutung für die Region. Hierzu die Bürgermeisterin der Stadt Rendsburg, Janette Sönnigsen. Die Schwebefähre ist für Rendsburg ein echtes Wahrzeichen und auch für die gesamte Region. Sie verbindet die Nord- mit der Südseite des Kanals und für viele Pendler und Schüler ist sie ein echtes Verkehrsmittel. Ohne sie müssten sie weite Umwege fahren. Doch auch künstlerisch zeigt sich die Rendsburger Schwebefähre von ihrer besten Seite. So wurde in der Vergangenheit zusammen mit dem Künstler und Designer Till Nowak ein einzigartiges Lichtspiel ins Leben gerufen. Die Brücke wird seitdem nachts beleuchtet. Auf beiden Seiten der Brücke befinden sich metallene Räder, an denen der Besucher die Möglichkeit hat zu drehen. Wenn dies geschieht, ändert sich die Farbe, in der die Stelze beleuchtet ist. Sobald die Fähre losfährt, überträgt sich die Farbe auf die Beleuchtung der Gondel und die Farbe wird an das andere Ufer getragen. Dort kann sie nun erneut verändert werden. Die Anerkennung der Schwebefähre als UNESCO-Welterbe hat für uns hier in Rendsburg eine sehr, sehr große Bedeutung. Und auch für die Region bedeutet das natürlich eine große touristische Aufwertung. Nicht zuletzt sichert sie natürlich auch den Erhalt der Schwebefähre mit der Eisenbahnhochbrücke. Und somit bleibt abzuwarten, was die Zukunft für die Schwebefähre bringt. Rendsburg ist bereit. En Buenos Aires, Argentina, se encuentra el único en América de los ocho puentes transbordadores que quedan en el mundo y que son considerados representativos de la revolución industrial. El transbordador Nicolás Avellaneda fue construido entre 1908 y 1914 por encargo del ferrocarril del Sud. Sus piezas fueron traídas en barco desde Inglaterra, donde fueron fabricadas por la empresa Earl of Dudley Steel. Inaugurado el 31 de mayo de 1914, es un emblema del barrio de La Boca y lo vincula con la isla Maciel. Estos dos barrios crecían entonces al ritmo del trabajo del puerto y de los muchos inmigrantes que encontraron aquí la oportunidad de formar un nuevo hogar y desarrollarse. Con el asentamiento de industrias, en poco tiempo no pudo cubrir las necesidades de traslado, y en 1940 un nuevo puente vial se instaló a su vera. En los años 60 el puente fue desactivado y quedó abandonado, hasta que en 1993 el gobierno nacional ordenó su desguace. Esto provocó una amplia movilización popular para rescatarlo, liderada por el arquitecto Pascualini. El puente obtuvo el reconocimiento de su importancia patrimonial. En 1995, la ciudad de Buenos Aires lo declaró sitio de interés cultural y en 1999 fue catalogado como Monumento Histórico Nacional. El transbordador Nicolás Avellaneda es un ícono de nuestra identidad nacional y en especial del barrio de La Boca. Su imagen, junto con la obra de Quinquela Martín, nos representan en el mundo entero. En 2012, la Corte Suprema de Justicia ordenó la reactivación del puente como parte de las obras de saneamiento de la cuenca Matanza-Riachuelo. La Dirección Nacional de Vialidad tuvo a su cargo los trabajos que finalizaron en 2017. 
Desde entonces ha funcionado solo para ocasiones especiales y recién, en 2020, se abrió su funcionamiento al público. Diversas asociaciones argumentan la importancia de que este testimonio de la era industrial obtenga la mayor protección posible y que sea declarado Patrimonio Mundial por la UNESCO en compañía de los otros puentes transbordadores que sobreviven aún en el mundo en el marco de la catalogación que ya posee el puente de Bilbao. Para nosotros, el transbordador Nicolás Avellaneda es más que un sitio turístico. Es un emblema de la resistencia y la lucha de muchos vecinos por la reivindicación de su patrimonio urbano y cultural y un símbolo de que la recuperación es posible. Puente Vizcaya es un caso paradigmático de lo que puede crear el ingenio humano cuando se dan circunstancias especiales. A finales del siglo XIX, la revolución industrial era un hecho y el entorno de Bilbao hervía de actividad. Su comercio se había liberado, sus minas tenían el mejor hierro del mundo y los clientes de media Europa lo demandaban. Las navieras vizcaínas lo exportaban, se montaban industrias, astilleros, ferrocarriles y el binomio carbón-acero parecía resolver todos los problemas antiguos. Bancos y compañías de seguros ganaban sumas increíbles. Las ciudades y los pueblos crecían. Los puertos que habían nacido al fondo de las rías comenzaban a bajar hacia las desembocaduras y también la población se acercaba a las costas al tiempo que el viajar por placer comenzaba a ser algo real. En este ambiente optimista, las ideas grandiosas tenían más oportunidades y Alberto de Palacio un brillante y creativo arquitecto vizcaíno concibió una idea insuperable para el puerto de Bilbao que ya entonces se asomaba a Labra. Patentó y consiguió financiación y permisos para construir un puente movible, un gran mecanismo de acero movido por una máquina de vapor que pasaría personas, personas y carruajes de una orilla a otra sin entorpecer el tráfico naval. La construcción no estuvo exenta de contratiempos y sin sabores, alargándose hasta tres años, pero en julio de 1893 su caldera se puso en marcha y su fogón no se apagó hasta 1905 cuando la luz eléctrica llegó a las arenas. Cuando llegó nuestra compañía a hacerse responsable de la concesión, estructura y equipos necesitaban una restauración urgente. La barquilla se revisó íntegramente, se renovaron los elementos y salas en que viajaban las personas y se automatizaron todos sus elementos, pasando a ser gobernada por un complejo sistema informático que activaba el operador. Todos estos esfuerzos fueron comprendidos no solo por nuestros clientes habituales, sino por UNESCO, que en 2006 elevó el puente a la lista española de patrimonio mundial. Hace ya 22 años que la barquilla lleva trabajando con los elementos que se le incorporaron entonces, pero la convocatoria 4.0 de puertos del Estado se muestra como una oportunidad única para remover la pereza y ponernos a prueba una vez más, espoleados no solo por nuestro orgullo de mejorar el puente, que se nos encomendó, sino de demostrar a cuantos se acerquen que un elemento histórico pueda admitir en su cuerpo y en su dinámica las últimas y mejores tecnologías verdes, junto a antiguos elementos y sistemas que hacen de él uno de los mejores museos de Bilbao.
The bridge was designed by Cleveland Bridge Company of Darlington and it was constructed by Sir William Howell Company of Glasgow. They had initially built the fourth rail bridge, which is one of the reasons why they won the contract. The bridge was officially opened on 17th of October 1911 by Prince Arthur of Connaught and it was initially used to transport the workers from either side from Middlesbrough to Port Clarence where the iron works and salt works were. In the First World War it survived Zeppelin attacks and numerous air raids. In the Second World War the gondola itself was actually hit by a bomb but was back working within sort of a few days. Later on, I think in the 1970s, it was a famous comedian, Terry Scott, managed to drive his car off almost into the river, but got caught in the netting rather than into the water. So he survived and was all alright. Uh, then a bit later on, there was Have We the Same Pet, uh, which was a comedy show that was filmed here. Um, we get many visitors coming just because of that. The bridge is massive to the whole of this area. As soon as you mention Middlesbrough, everybody goes, transport a bridge. Everyone's got a story. Everyone's got something to say about it. I actually live over the other side, um, on the Port, Port Clarence side. So I see it from both bits. And one of my favorite things to do is just to come down when the sun is going down, see the sunset. It's absolutely stunning. You get gorgeous photos. Everybody loves it. We uh, had a lot of filming going on here. We brought the bridge in uh, well wide. We had Billy Elliot, Alvina Saint Pet, we had Lighthouse family who came as well. And then we had the visitor centre built and opened by Fred Dibbler. So it, it got noticed well right well wide really. The bridge has been celebrated by lots of different artists. At the moment we have a piece of artwork on site by the celebrated Middlesbrough artist, Mackenzie Four, waiting for my dad. And the bridge has also inspired lots of art across the decades. As a part of the Centenary Works, the bridge underwent extensive renovation funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. A new lift was installed, the gondola was renovated, and the bridge now is one of the major visitor attractions of Teesside. In the Transport Bridge is currently closed for renovation work, and we're exploring for the Tees Transport Bridge Task Force new ways in which to enter and celebrate the Transport Bridge culturally, in education, and through the visitor economy of Teesside. At the time at the start of the 1900s, Newport was getting busier and busier. All of the development was over on the west side of the city. The east side had lots of land to use. Another river crossing was desperately needed further downstream, here near the docks. It was the job of Robert Haynes, the borough engineer, to decide what type of structure would be needed. He looked at a subway, which would cost too much money, a conventional bridge like the Town Bridge, which wouldn't be tall enough to allow the ships to pass underneath or a ferry system, which would be inconvenient because of the rise and fall of the tide, but also incredibly dangerous. He saw this idea of a transborder in an engineering magazine, and so he took a group of people from the Newport Corporation over to see one being built in Rouen in France. There he met the designer Ferdinand Arnadin, and the group decided that a transporter bridge was the best solution within the borough's resources. Arnadin and Robert Haynes became joint engineers and work began on the Transporter Bridge in 1902. The Transporter Bridge is important to the city and its residents because it's an iconic, memory-filled, important part of our history. When the bridge opened in 1906, the eyes of the world were on Newport at the time. Our docks were very important, incredibly busy and the streets bustled with an influx of workers. Everybody wants to see this incredible bridge being opened and therefore it's incredibly important to the residents here in Newport. In recent years the Transporter Bridge is not just a commuter route, we're looking at innovative ways that we can use the bridge to attract people for a variety of different reasons. Some of the events that we have done include summer solstice, late night openings, giving people the opportunity to see the bridge in a different way. One of the best events we've held is working with Tinshed Theatre on a local production of Moby Dick. People were able to come and see live theatre right in front of them on the gondola. It was a completely different use of the space and it's something that we want to look at moving forward. 
This is an exciting time for the Newport Transporter Bridge. We have secured funding from the National Lottery Heritage Fund of £8.75 million towards the restoration of this iconic structure and to help us build a brand new visitor centre. This vital restoration work will include the eastern approach, replacing some of the main suspension cables, carrying out vital work on the boom and also restoring the gondola to its former glory. The redevelopment of the Newport Transporter Bridge will help ensure that Newport's industrial past and the wider history of Wales will be able to be celebrated and preserved for future generations. It will also allow local people to take ownership of their own heritage and culture. It will also create 102 volunteer opportunities, new jobs and two apprenticeships for young people aged 16 to 24 years. The Transporter Bridge will become one of the most visited attractions in Wales. The Warrington Transporter Bridge was designed by William Henry Hunter and built by William Aron and Company between 1915 and 1916 during the First World War. Arrol also built Tower Bridge in London, the fourth bridge in Scotland, and our sister transporter bridge in Middlesbrough. It did not have any kind of ceremony when it was first used, as it is not, nor has it ever been a public bridge. This transporter bridge crosses the Mersey River in Warrington, connecting two parts of an industrial complex making soap, margarine and briefly concrete. The bridge was built to carry concrete from the plant over the river to the main railway line. It was in use until 1964 when a road bridge was built, as big ships had stopped sailing up the Mersey by then. It finally stopped working in 1976. The company, then Unilever, wanted to dismantle the bridge, but due to protests by Cheshire County Council, and heritage interest, it was transferred to the council in a 50-year lease. This lease has now been taken on by Warrington Borough Council and is due for renewal in 2027. Warrington is the youngest bridge, unique in an industrial setting initially used for carrying rail wagons. It has regular engineering surveys and some necessary maintenance and it is in reasonably good condition, but it needs full restoration. Warrington Borough Council and Friends of Warrington Transporter Bridge see the bridge as a huge asset for the community, if it is appropriately developed as a tourist attraction and brings people to the town. Everyone who makes the effort to go and see and talk about it is impressed with the scale of the bridge and its interesting history. We already have visitors from as far away as Japan and Friends of Warriton Transporter Bridge works to encourage local people to be proud of their rail transporter bridge. There is a Warrington Borough Council development plan for the Mersey River Bank. The bridge will be a focal point and the council will seek grants to restore the bridge and promote it with the help of Friends of Warrington Transporter Bridge. We invite everyone to visit our Facebook page Save Warrington Transporter Bridge and our website www.warringtontransporterbridge.co.uk